Hi everybody, this is Carmen DeVelis and I am the CEO and founder of Doggies for Dementia Foundation. Thank you for watching today. Um, I haven't done many lives lately, however, I have been getting a lot done, so it's been very productive in working in fundraisers and doing what we do. You know, our mission is to uh, raise awareness, to reduce stigma, the isolation and loneliness that families and people impacted by Alzheimer's and other dementia experience. And, you know, we do this with these photo sessions with families and, and gift them those photos, of course, and it's a really incredible experience for them. And then we go on to use those, the family stories and show those images to help us all understand a little bit better about what it's like um, to live with Alzheimer's or, and, or other forms of dementia. Alzheimer's is one form. And um, this weekend, I had a chance to do something completely in line with our mission and our values. And uh, something I heard about, I actually read it on Facebook, and I saw these threads and these posts that families were making, telling the stories about their loved ones that are in long-term care, so in memory care or assisted living, and some in um, actual skilled nursing facilities. And you know, since March, many of them have not been able to visit or to see their loved ones. And, you know, sometimes they'll say, well, or you may have seen it on the news, people are going to the windows and watching and are trying to get the person to go to the window and see their families. And the stories I've heard about that and that sometimes it works out pretty good. And, and another time, you know, the family member who has Alzheimer's is on the other side of this window does not understand why they can't be there with their families or are frightened because someone is outside of their window, especially with a mask on. And um, so are there are a lot, a lot of things that are causing extreme anxiety. And then people are staying in their rooms if they're COVID in the community, of course, to protect all the, the residents are pretty much sequestered to their rooms and receive their meals there. And of course, they're being cared for and served by the caregivers who are taking precautions for them and for themselves by wearing a mask. So I'm sure I've painted a picture here that you can figure out what it would be like to be that person alone and confused in your room and not knowing why. And um, I, I heard about a rally um, this weekend, Saturday, that was um, put on by the Texas Caregivers for Compromise. And that's exactly what they're seeking is a compromise um, with lawmakers to say, hey, and, and this is not just in Texas, this group was in Texas, of course, and at the state capitol in Austin, but it, there is cross country, saying we need to be really consistent and have some laws in place and guidelines on how the visitations can be. Because what's happened is their loved ones are declining rapidly and are um, getting sicker faster. And some of them just think that they're in prison and they're asking their families, please, whatever I did, I'm sorry, bail me out. I want to go home. And they're frightened. And I, I can't imagine what that would be like to be the family member on the side of that window seeing someone I love kind of hands to the window begging to come out. And, you know, there's the quandary is we have we have a crisis with COVID-19 and and people are dying, getting very, very sick, especially this population, very fragile. Right. And then we have the flip side of it. The isolation is killing them, too. And so how do we find something there? And so as schools are opening, bars are open and golf courses and all kinds of places where people are out and about, but family members cannot enter or see their loved one unless it's through a plexiglass, um, you know, a glass wall of some kind. So there's no touching, no hugging, um, and no direct contact. And uh, so they're asking for a compromise. And I think it's totally legitimate to say that. I, I, I think as we learn more about it, then we can do better. And, you know, pe professionals that the infectious disease people aren't even sure what the exact thing to do is, but we're learning and changing and adapting as things go. 
And um, so as I'm standing there, I'm listening to these stories. I um, approached a few who, you know, as we were mingling and asked them, would you be willing to tell their story? I want to put this together and share it to our audience here with Doggies for Dementia because they have their own audience, of course, um, and they're reaching them, but I would like to reach others and um, to see what we can do about this. And so I, I created a video slideshow and sh shared their stories. And I've got a few to show you right here. And um, also a link to the Texas um, senators and representatives so that we can, and if you go to Texas Caregivers for Compromise, they have a little blip and I'll post it here too, what to ask for, what to say and what to um, so that we can make the situation better so it's certainly not a um it's not an attack on communities long-term care communities because we got to face it they're doing the best they can with what they're being told and what they're doing and a lot of times a lot of their staff members are out sick too or have covid and they're out for weeks and they're working with what they can but it's a it's a situation that um needs some adaptation to say the least to say the least so i'm having some problems dragging pictures over but i'm going to do my best here let's see here um okay so um this is uh carrie uh phelps who was um at the rally with her uh husband and in february they married there at the community so that her father could be a part of it and then, so maybe that was March. And then the next day was the quarantine. And she's telling the story how she hasn't been able to see her father since then. And her sign read, she's just a girl missing her daddy. And very, very compelling story there as, um, as well. So I wanna thank, um, uh, I thank Carrie for sure. Um, I have uh, here another one, do my best open. Um, Sorry, the thingy that makes it open the whole screen is not working, but I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to leave this part out because I think it's really important. This is Cynthia Berry and Cynthia um, shared her story about her, her aunt and how um, she's just so incredibly ill and has gotten more sick. And she had to make an unbelievable choice on when she could actually visit. She had the opportunity to visit. Well, I'll just let you watch the video because I don't want to tell you the whole story, but, um, it's, it's unimaginable to me. And Cynthia just speaks also with so much passion and um, compassion. And, and if you see that, there's just no way that you could say, well, I'm not gonna do anything about that. There's no way. And um, I have one other one here. Uh, this is Beverly Dameron. And Be Beverly is telling the story of her mother and how she sits by her window and hoping that she can come to her window Although her mother has declined so much and lost, I think, how much, 18 pounds in like 30 days and um, is declining so rapidly and she just doesn't know what to do to help her mother and um, she's not able to get in there. And then there's um, another story that's in the video to uh, Jamie Gardner, who Gardner, who um, tells the story of, um, of her father as well, who tested positive for COVID and what that was like. And, and I, I'm saying their names, and I want to say it again because they're in the video and they were um, generous enough to share their stories, which takes a huge amount of vulnerability, right? Um, so Cynthia Berry, Jamie Gartner, Beverly Dameron, and uh, Carrie and Travis Phelps, thank you so much for sharing your stories. And what do we do now? You know, go listen to the video, and there's a link there of at least the Texas representatives. You know, and across the country, this is happening. So this is not just Texas. Um, there is a um, Facebook group that is Caregivers for Compromise that's national, and then it got to be so big that um, many states created their own. And this is for Texas. And I'm certainly within the mission of Doggies for Dementia, and it's our first blog, uh, one of the first blogs on our new website. Uh, so the link is there. Go take a look at doggiesfordementia.org and um, this blog, and let's see what we can do. And reach out to me because um, I would love to do more too. And um, the, uh, the situation just needs to be changed and to call this an urgent compromise is probably, is not enough. It just needed to happen yesterday already. 
And um, I know if I, if I could have some of the community staff members, they would say the same. Because when you love your residents and you're seeing them decline and your hands are tied with how to help them, it's just the worst. And um, so let's do this together. Let's do this together and make a difference. So thank you guys for listening and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.